This is V Paragon, your sales representative in Europe. We can open new markets for you and sell your products or services easy, effectively, inexpensively, and immediately with no long term commitments or contracts. Contact us now at www.vparagon.com. Hello, everybody. This is Alex, and I want to speak today about um, uh, a subject that was sparked from an interview to some salespeople that I had some uh, weeks ago on behalf of a client of mine. So uh, on behalf of a client of mine, we had uh, interviewed 10 different salespersons for an inside sales role. And the question we asked them was, uh, let's assume that you uh, know all the parts of your product and there is a specific uh, and there is a specific uh, quality of your product that is supreme. It's uh, undoubtedly uh, a very good quality, a very uh, good unique selling point that your product has uh, beyond any dispute. And there comes a customer, a prospect, and he disputes that quality. Let me, to make it more clear, let's assume, for example, you have a, a platform that offers a service and you are notorious to have the best customer service in the market. Not only because your customer service agents are very well trained and very well educated on the subject, but also because you offer the service on a 24-7 uh, basis. So, and then comes this prospect and, and disputes about the quality of this service that you are offering. What is going to be your answer? Are you going to tell him, sorry, but you are wrong? Or you are going to try to, try to find a diplomatic, a nice answer and explain to him why your service is a good one without being so direct to him? That was the question that's been asked to all those salespeople and the vast majority of them came with the answer, I am going to be diplomatic. I'm going to try to explain to him the benefits of our service and why it is a good service and why we have a very good customer service. And I would like to ask you now to think about that. Think about that. Is that the correct answer? Let me go to the point and I will go to the point and I will not answer super simple. I'm not going to go on the super simplicity mode that the majority of sales managers do outside there and they come and they come with canned answers, simple answers. I'm, go, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth and explain to you. So my first question is, why do you think a customer is buying from you? A prospect is buying from you. What are the reasons? Is the product that it's good? It's uh, the, the service that it's nice is because you have a good marketing department. What are the, the main elements, the main reasons why a prospect is going to decide to choose your company instead of a, of a competitor company. Three main reasons why somebody buys from you is because first, he likes you, second, he trusts you, and third, he sees value in the product that you are selling. Now, we have a very good product here. We have this platform that offers an excellent um, customer support, a notorious customer support. And there comes somebody that disputes that, questions the quality of this good service that we are offering. What is going to be your reaction? If you want my answer, and I'm going to explain that further, it's you should tell to the client that he's wrong. You should tell him, excuse me, sir, but you are completely wrong on that, what you are saying. Our service is the best service outside there in the market for this and for that and for that reason, 
we we have been praised from those we have been praised from those and those and those magazines and uh, and online websites. So, and that is the honest answer from you. And that answer creates trust. Why does this answer create trust? Because it's an answer that the prospect does not expect. And why he does not expect that? Because he knows that you are not going to give him this answer. Because this answer actually attacks his ego. When you are telling him that he is wrong, you attack his ego. So when you attack his ego, why should this person trust you? He is going to trust you because he knows that the path that you are going it's the honest path for exactly the reason that you attack his ego. You don't try to sell him anymore. You say the, the truth. You say things the way things are. And that builds trust. And for that reason, you're going to do the sale. You're going to do the sale because exactly you tell him the truth. You tell him he's wrong. Of course, this on things that you are 100% sure that they are the way they are. You know your customer support is the best outside in the market. You don't question that. And you don't allow other people to question that because it's simply not truth. If you have the truth by your side, you are going to sell. Now, if there are some points of your service that are not as good as this one and somebody questions them, then again, with, you can answer honestly and with the truth and tell him, yes, sir, you are right. We are not good on those and those points. However, this is being compensated from those X, Y, Z benefits that my product, my, that my product has. Now, is this question, is this reply, the, the right reply always? The answer is no. It is not always the right reply. Let me explain to you why. This is the right reply if you talk to the owner of the company. If you talk to the guy that has nothing to fear for taking a decision. And the owner of the company Going to is the ultimate decision maker. He has nothing to fear. There is nobody that is going to fire him or there is no group inside a company that is going to use his possibly false decisions against him. He's the ultimate decision maker. But do you have the opportunity always to talk with the ultimate decision maker? Again, the answer is no, you don't. Maybe you are selling services or product in big corporations and you talk to managers. Are managers the ultimate decision makers like owners? The answer is yes and no. They are not the ultimate decision makers as owners are. However, in big organizations, they are the ultimate decision makers because the company is so big that other people, managers, that means employees, that means employees of a company take decisions for the company. And the employee, the manager, the sales manager, the purchase manager, the technical manager, his number one priority is not the good of the company that he's working, but his personal agenda. So everything, every decision that he makes, it's being filtered through the personal ambitions and personal agenda that he has. And then comes the good of the company. So to a person like this, it's not very wise to challenge his ego. What is wise to do in this case is again to have a standpoint 
explain to this guy that listen my words I, I don't say he's wrong I say he's not correct it's different explain to him he's not correct for the A, B, C, D reasons and then explain to him what is going to be the benefit for him if he chooses your solution the benefit for him not for the company so in our example let's say that our state-of-the-art customer support is going to solve a problem that exists in this company since years of now and that is going to have the benefit for him that he's going to be the one that solve this five six seven year old problem and that is going to place him in a better position against his uh, competition within his company and he's going to place him to give him more respect compared to his colleagues that are competing for his position so it's his personal benefit first explain to him the personal benefit if you have to deal with a decision maker which is an employee I want to go to two more points in this discussion. I sell through my confidence. That is my number one weapon of selling. And I am confident because I say the truth and I'm selling the truth. And I do not accept if somebody disputes something that I know it's good, I know has benefits, and I'm confident for its quality and the service that it's providing. I do not accept that. If you challenge me on that, I'm not going to be diplomatic. I am confident because I am in the side of the truth. Truth sells, lies don't sell. And if I can extend that a little bit more, let me ask you this, in your life, in your life, you, we all have those friends that they have a standpoint and they fight for their standpoint. Maybe we agree with the standpoint, maybe we don't. And we have these other friends that they never argue. They never choose to fight. They always there, they taking a neutral position. They want to be likable from everybody. Let me ask you this, and I'm going to close with that. From those two people that you know, regardless if you agree or not, who do you respect more? The one that stands for something or the other one that doesn't stand? For, from whom would you buy a product? Thanks for listening. This is Alex Balasidis. This is V Paragon, your sales representative in Europe. We can open new markets for you and sell your products or services easy, effectively, inexpensively, and immediately with no long term commitments or contracts. Contact us now at www.vparagon.com. If you found this podcast interesting, please share it with your friends and colleagues.